Since the involvement of NASCAR superstars Dale Earnhardt Jr., Kevin Harvick, Jeff Burton, and Justin Marks, the notoriety of the Cars Tour and its competitors has skyrocketed. The racing speaks for itself because it's true, grassroots, hard-nosed late model racing at its best. And we're here to bring that action to light. This is On Tour. Welcome back to On Tour. My name is Buddy Pulley, joined, of course, by my co-host, Chase Folsom, or as we know him on this channel, is Chuck. Um, it's good to be back for me. It's been a long time since I've been on, but it's been um, almost as long a time since we've seen you guys and gotten to talk about a Cars Tour race. Um, and it's been a minute since the last Cars Tour race. Uh, we've I've been off traveling to you know Chicago, and we've we've been all over the place with the show. But um, Chuck is back from Nashville. And we all went to Caraway. Everybody at the Big Motor Small Blade YouTube channel attended the Caraway race. And let me tell you, it might have been a week ago, but I'm hard hard pressed to believe it's still not in the front of your mind, Chuck. How about that race? Dude, that was one of the coolest things I have ever witnessed in person. Um, having you guys there was really cool too. But I wasn't at these other races that were that are in mm -hmm. the conversation for greatest horse tour race ever which i think we may get into in a little bit here yeah um so to be there for as it's happened you you're like oh this might be an instant class yeah and then like the laps progress and they keep moving each other they keep moving each other and it's like man this is really happening this is real life this is awesome uh we'll talk a little bit more about the finish here in a little bit but yeah overall yeah. It's so fun to be there Man, Caraway, <clears throat> I was very impressed by the by the racetrack. the The amenities for the fans are top notch at you know at any for any local short track that I've been to. Obviously, I know Dominion's held up held up there with um with the best of them. Um, and I've I've never been there, but um, Caraway, super nice racetrack. Um, they just put in some new bleachers this year. Um, and they attracted a great crowd and dude, we saw some great racing. I mean, from the legend car race all the way to the, to the car store race. I mean, that was by far the best legend car race I've ever seen in my life. Caitlin Hardwick put on a show for us, him and, uh, what Kitz Miller, um, they were going at it in that legend car race. Uh, we actually posted a video, <laughs> my co-host on the big motor small blade podcast that he, um, he did his best uh, Dale Jr. impression and commentated the last seven laps of that race. So if you want to, you want to uh, go watch that. That's uh, that'll you be need good. A laugh. That'll be, watch. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but uh, it led right into what was a fantastic car store race. That was just, I mean, it's been a long time since I've been to just a race period. That was that memorable. <laughs> like I've been to, dare I say, hundreds of, of races over my life. And, I got to say, this might be top five as far as most memorable. Yeah, I, about the amenities, Caraway's done a lot to that racetrack in the past couple of years. Everybody knows if you follow the sport, late model stock car racing a couple of years ago, all the tracks in North Carolina got a select amount of money to upgrade their facilities. And Caraway put it into their facilities and not yeah. the track itself because the track itself is already good. Bathrooms are good. They yeah. actually added another concession stand this year, which was needed, and the bleachers yeah. as well, because they were getting hickory level. But I'm glad they made the upgrades. Um, the track is really weird. I dare I say it is a modified track that late model stock cars happen to race on, because that's how it's kind of built. That's kind of yeah, is, is that it's a modified track, and yeah. there's more modified races there than late model races. Uh, mm -hmm. They have they have a weekly, I believe they have a weekly 602 and 604 series actually, but that's not important. So sometimes it can put on boring races, but when you get the right people at the front of the field that have the right history with each other, it can put on a fantastic show. And that is what we saw. There is just one yeah. knock with this racetrack. Uh -oh. um, it is in the middle of absolutely nowhere. This is true. Like, is, well, okay. I can't. One bar is generous. I didn't have, well, yeah, no, service is really bad out there. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, service was uh, not the best out there in uh, Sophia, North Carolina. And as a as a guy who's lived in North Carolina all, all his life, I don't know who the hell Sophia is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never heard of her. Um, but yeah, I mean, 
it was just it was a fun it was just a fun day at the racetrack generally there was a lot of it brought out a lot of big names i mean obviously william byron ran the race but i mean we saw josh berry walking around there we saw bobby labani out there walking around i mean it 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 brought out a great crowd and i think that's a product of it being on a wednesday night um and you know it looks like everybody had a had a great time at the racetrack um and they saw a great race um before we get into the finish let's talk about the uh the the unfortunate uh tale of Corey heim at caraway i um, forgot about this i want to say one quick thing about caraway um and their status in the car store because they've they've kind of been all over the place there was a point even two years ago that they hosted this series biggest race the old north state nationals which 30 grand to win it was also the season opener and then even up until last year they held the championship race and yeah. now they've they've been cut back to this wednesday night race in the middle of the summer but past two years we've seen massive crowd i think it works and i think it works yeah. because it's close to home and you can yeah. draw a william byron or last year a kyle larson yeah. Corey heim this year to come run this race not Corey heim anymore we'll get to that but um to come run this race and everybody can go there because it's central to where nascar's big north carolina fan bases are it's not far from charlotte it's not far yeah. from Greenboro, raleigh yeah I think this Wednesday race is a good spot for their identity to be, and I hope they keep it going forward. It's right before the fourth, so they got the whole firecracker thing. I wish we yeah. had seen it works, but we saw them on the racetrack instead. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, I we mentioned Corey Heim just a minute ago. Um, he got into a little um and into an incident with Jacob Hefner, um, where he essentially got squeezed into the wall and up onto his side. Uh, Martin Shurex at Richmond style um, and ended up um, tipping over onto his lid, which in hindsight was a heads up move by Jacob Hevner um, because Corey was, I guess, pinned. He was would have been pinned in the car had Jacob not moved, moved his and gotten out. But uh, it was um, a lengthy uh, process. <laughs> it wasn't. To uh to get Corey out of the car, but he did get out of the car safe and sound. That's good to see. But that was a uh, that was a scary wreck and just a uh, a wild, like I said, man, a wild night. I mean, it it almost got overshadowed by the finish. I mean, that that tells you anything about the the night of race when we saw it Caraway. But uh, and then Butterbean almost went and did the same thing. Yeah. So um yeah that was Bean. Seth's fault 100 percent i'm gonna blame seth since he's not here seth did say he's like what if somebody else flips and then butterbean asked him to hold his beer and we all go oh yeah exactly exactly butterbean was uh halfway out of the track and down the road to waffle house but <laughs> but uh yeah anyway on to the uh on to some good news and um the finish of this race um yeah, this was short track racing at its best. Like this was for NASCAR fans. If you, I mean, obviously, if you're watching this, you're probably a NASCAR fan. Um, I think back to Richmond in 2014 and the epic battle we saw there, and really insert any all time classic epic battle. It, it, you know, this, this is up there with it. Um, it was Carson Quapple. Connor Hall, two of the cars tour best. I mean, absolutely, an absolute slugfest. And uh, Britt Cruz just happened to be the guy uh, right there in third, ready to pounce when it all, when it all went down. And uh, it really, we'll, t we'll talk to Britt here in a minute, but it really showed off a lot of Britt's racecraft. Um, and which is, which is good to see the, the evolution of that for him. Uh, throughout the the beginning of this year, but Chuck, what, take me through um, your eyes watching this finish go down. So, again, we're gonna get more to Hall versus Quapple specifically in a yeah. little bit. But when Connor Hall took the lead with thirty something to go, and he used up the eight, when the yellow flew with nine to go, we all knew what was gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. Everybody said it on the radio, and you didn't even have to hear the radio because we all knew what was about to go yeah. down. And it as did. calm and cool as Carson Quapel is, it it was it was very. And let's let's take him back a little bit. Connor Hall was giving the field a goodbye look, and so you know he he definitely there's no no 
question about it. He had a better car than Carson Quapple. Quapple was was struggling, um, and you know Connor used him up. Um, there was some choice words definitely thrown back and forth between the two. Obviously, we'll talk about that, but um, I think I think Connor showed some restraint in in that battle he he could have taken Carson around he didn't take he didn't take him around he could have given him a lot more grace and he didn't do that but that's you know that's kind of the you know that that shows the hand of connor hall and shows like like we'll get into you know how how things will continue on in the in the future of the car store but um he he definitely was gone it was over connor hall was going to win this race and Carson Quapple had all that time running in second to just stew over the fact that this race just got away from him and in which the manner it did get away from him. Yeah. And then caution comes out with nine to go and repress prey. And what do you got to say, Chuck? So, yeah, the like Buddy said, he was gone. The only car, I think, in the field that could have matched up with the 22 was the 24, William Byron. Yeah. And I want to like, mention that he was honestly a part of the battle, too, yeah, and there was a point where you forgot mm-hmm. Greg was there because even on that restart, we were like, okay, it's William Byron versus Connor Hall versus Carson Quapple. Because Byron yeah. was second when the yellow came out, he lined up second. Yeah, and then I think the reason that this finish happened the way it did is because you had a guy on the front row that doesn't normally do this every week. Yeah, and that just shows how good these late model guys are because William didn't get the restart that he needed to get from the outside. Daytona five hundred champion. And- William Byron. Yes. So, and he didn't get the restart he needed. He got schooled by Connor Hall on the restart. 100%. And and I think in hindsight, he made the right decision because the top on the restart, if you could hang out there, was good. Very good. But it opened the door for Carson Quapple to do what he wanted to do. Move the 22 and three, and he sent him in one. And all of a sudden, there was Brent Cruz. And it was like, completely Kevin Harvick ask where the hell did he come from it exactly and to go back to William Byron he kind of got caught in a dance that he didn't that he didn't know the moves for essentially um and like you like you just hit on that was very Kevin Harvick ask what Brent Cruz did was quintessential Kevin Harvick he he laid in the back waited for them them two squirrels to you know you know <laughs> fight over the fight yeah we'll go with that we'll we'll use that expression um not the not the little bit more uh pg-13 one but um yeah it's um he he did he did a such a good job and and like we'll talk about here in a minute it was it was something that i wish we saw more of with with guys even at the top level of nascar is you know use your eyes and use your better judgment to determine how you're going to go about winning this race. And that's something that his uh, his boss, Kevin Harvick, did too, did perfectly so many times in his career. So, and it, so like, in this, fi- this finish, it ultimately, it ends up turning into the quintessential show of late model bumper cars. Like, yeah. we're just giving each other the chrome horn in every turn. And you know what? When you don't cross the line of fair and foul, if you yeah. stay in the fair side, it's fine. Everybody's doing it to everybody else. And Landon Huffman said it very well. Shout out, Landon. Um, he said, I'm, I don't know the exact words because I'm not looking at his tweet, but he pretty much said, you know, race car drivers have a very good memory. Yeah. And that these finishes like this, and specifically that one, dis- doesn't happen by chance. Yeah. You have a group of guys at the front of the field that A, will do whatever they have to do to win the race, and B, they know what the other one's willing to do to win the race, so they don't have to see him do it. They already yeah. know what would happen. They, yeah. There doesn't need to be, oh, well, if he does it first, because they already know if he's behind me, he's going to do it. So yeah. I can do it first. And, and you, you get what we got. And it, yeah. And as long as knows it's also. there's an art to moving a guy. And that, <laughs> in my opinion, in short track racing, all the way down from your street stocks to your cup series, has become a lost art. And this was a a perfect example of how it should be done in those closing laps of the race. And just kudos to to Brick Cruz for, you know, showing such poise at such a young age 
yet young age and uh, being able to pull off the win. Um, let's hear from our winner, Brent Cruz, after his just ungodly performance at Caraway. When you see Connor Hall and Carson Quabble kind of using each other up in front of you, does that open the door for, okay, now I'm allowed to do the same thing because that's how we're racing tonight? 1,000%. You're kind of just, they set the principle of, of what the, the night's going to be like. If nobody's touching each other, then I don't think that ever happens at three and four. So, yeah, I mean, I, I would normally not do something like that, but my bumper, my back bumper's destroyed too. So, kind of how the night was, kind of how it was like at Langley. So, um, you just see these short tracks like this that get such good drivers that get all amped up, and you just see them start moving each other with a couple laps to go. So, yeah, happy to be the one that ended up on top and excited to keep that way. So obviously you heard it there. Brent Cruz said they set the precedent when it came down to the finish of the race, but even throughout the race, he was sneaky good all race long. Yeah. Um, he qualified inside the top 10. He was inside the top five most of the night. And it was, like I said earlier, it was really overshadowed by Connor Hall versus Carson Quapel at the front and William yeah. Byron charged from 15th. And that kind of, yeah. those three kind of overshadowed everything. And Brent worked his way up to fourth. And at one point actually went for the lead in the whole Carson Quapel Connor Hall bit, and you never even really noticed it because yeah. it was so overshadowed. And then it got down to the end of the race, and he pulled the old Kevin Harvick. But that's something we've seen a lot from him this year. Ever since Southern National, where he was on the wrong end of it. Exactly. He I was learned. Sure. And we, really I, cool watch, actually. I We are echoing the words we said after his win at uh, – at um, Orange County, yep. it was it Orange County, right? Awesome. Um, and he learned that Southern National race, he went out and just curb stopped them from lap one to a hundred, lap twenty one hundred to one twenty five. He wasn't really much to be found, and it took that one race for him to realize, okay, I got to change my approach. And we we said it a couple of times on the show, the the amount of poise and the amount of, you know, student of the and the student of a sport that he is, is it continues to impress me at such a young age. And I think something he said in that interview and the, the main thing he said in that interview was they set like you said, they set the precedent. This is something I, I hinted at it earlier that I want I I would like to see more in the Cup Series. I, I think I mentioned to Brent off off the camera uh, when we were talking to him after the race. I said, look, you know, we see in the Cup Series a lot. Joey Logano race guys a certain way, and a lot of times he doesn't get it back. Obviously, there's the one big instance in which he got it back. But for the most part, he, yeah. was, he was relatively untouched. <laughs> and I said to Brent, I said, look, Brent, I said, thank you. because." That right there, that is that is the the teachings and the learnings of of Dale Earnhardt and guys like that of you know race how you get raced and the sport will police itself and the garage can police itself, but it goes back to what I said earlier. There's not a lost art of just running over a guy. There's there's a way to do it and do it with class, but also sticking up for yourself. And I think that's something we've you know, seen from Brent too. We mentioned it um, after the ASA. Was it the ASA race at uh, Hickory that he? Um, yeah, and they kind of stood his ground. And I think we're seeing the the kind of culmination of all those different lessons that Brent has learned this year, and that's why he's becoming a weekly a weekly contender more often. I mean, yeah, there's <clears throat> there's nothing prettier than a bump and run in a late model stock car. I mean. Especially those crossover ones where they just oh, cut yeah. bumper it. Whoop, there you go. Um, and I mean, really nobody what amazed me so much, and Brent did this really well with Carson. Carson did it back. Carson did something different to Connor Hall on that restart, and we know that. Yeah. But the rest of the time, nobody was everybody was giving each other the bumper, but nobody, and especially Brent, was knocking somebody out of the groove in a way that they were out of contention. You yeah. knock them up. You knock them up a groove, not two. Yeah. One, they're still in the race. Two, they're gone. And yeah. until the final corner, which that that one was a little different. He he uh, 
He sent Connor back to Greensboro on that last one. <laughs> Yeah, well, and you got to do what you got to do. You got to do what you got to do to win. Yeah. You got to you you have to respect the guy. You have to let him live to fight another day. But when it comes down to it, you have to there is no other day. Exactly. When it comes down to it, this is do or die. What would Connor Hall do in the situation? He just proved to you what he would do in this situation, not on the last lap. So take what you can take what you can and go get your trophy. And I think that's what this series – and he's – the first 100 laps of Southern National, he was the shark. Yep. And then for the last 25 laps, he was the minnow. Yeah. He figured that out really quickly. And ever since then, he's been the shark at the end of these races. He was at Orange County. He almost was at Langley. And he was at Caraway. Yeah. I mean, that's – guys standing their ground is something this series has that a lot of – places don't and it's not just brent it's not just connor because connor stands his ground obviously yeah it's not just carson butterbean does it they all do it everybody that comes through this series and that's what makes this series so great is they fight like their lives depend on it yeah and they know that there are eyes on them now and if you don't stand your ground if you get pushed around i'm sorry there's car owners now that are watching that yeah if I'm a car owner and I'm going to take a chance, I'm obviously Brent's with KHI, so yeah, a little bit different. But still, if I'm a Gene Haas watching Brent Cruz run a late model and I maybe want to put him in an Xfinity car one day, I want to see a guy that's not going to let me get that's not going to let my equipment get pushed around. Yeah, like yeah. I don't want I don't want my equipment getting used up. I want a guy that's going to stand his ground if I'm going to take a chance on a short track guy that doesn't always come with funding. And Brent's a bad example of this, but it's something that these guys in this series understand so well. And he's a perfect example of it, especially for his age. Yeah. And to, um, to kind of close out the, the Brent, Brent Cruz win, um, it's something to be said about his confidence and how much more comfortable, if you go back and watch our, our episode after Orange County, He's uncomfortable behind the camera or in front of the camera. Um, he He's very like, you know, okay, watch what I say. Just give a good PR answer. I I mean, we, we talked to him a little bit after Orange County, but not much. He was very, he was relatively shy. Confidence is there, dude. The confidence is there. He was joking around with us afterwards. I mean, he seemed super confident during that interview that like, hey, I'm here, baby. Like, and I think that's that's something that is dangerous. I mean, we we have it written down in the notes here. Um, he's back in this championship battle. Nine points. And, yep. And that's uh, you know, Connor Hall, and this will be a great lead into this. Connor Connor Hall opened up Pandora's box a little bit this weekend. He had an opportunity to gain a lot of points on Butterbean, and he gave a few away. Because, and I'm, I say he gave a few away because, you know, if he, we'll let Carson Quapple explain here a little bit. But yeah, yeah I do want to say one more thing before we, uh, before we take a quick break. Um, it is, uh, it is something to be said that now Buddy Pulley and Chase Wilson are watching. So I think that's why they're racing a little bit harder. <laughs> Oh my gosh. All I'm right. Dead. So with that, uh, <laughs> yeah, with that, um, let's take a look at the results from the car store at Caraway. Taking a look at your results now from the Firecracker 265 at Caraway Speedway. It was Brent Cruz who picked up the win in the Wednesday night cars tour special, followed by Cup Series Daytona 500 champion William Byron in second, and points leader Connor Hall rounding out the podium in third. In his first start of the season, Jared Fryer came home fourth, with Carson Quapple leading the most laps on the night and falling to fifth. Lane Riggs was the hard charger on the ninth, coming home sixth, with Connor Zilich in seventh, Dylan Ward a strong run in eighth, Ronnie Bassett Jr. in ninth, and Ryan Millington rounding out the top ten. Trayton Lapsovich just outside the top ten in eleventh, with Connor Jones in twelfth, Andrew Grady came home thirteenth, with Jacob Hefner in fourteenth, Deke McCaskill suffered damage late in the race and fell to 15th with Bobby McCarty in 16th, Chad McCombie in 17th, Brandon Pierce brought the number two home in 18th with Bryce Applegate in 19th, and Katie Hettinger in 20th. 
Jason Kitzmiller came home in 21st after falling out of the race early, followed by Minnie Tyrell in 22nd. Brendan Queen, after a crash on the back straightaway, fell to 23rd in the final running order. Corey Heim, who flipped on the front straightaway, would come home 24th, and Cade Brown 25th, with Heath Causey in 26th. So Brent Cruz won the race. William Byron, Cup Series star, he finished second. But those two weren't the story. It was all about who finished third and fifth. Uh, Connor Hall and Carson Quapple and their epic battle that uh, I think we haven't seen the last of. Um, Chuck, you talked to him. What do, what was the vibe you got from Connor and uh, and Carson after this race? Yeah, um, I mean, you'll see when we play the interviews here. It was Connor Hall was trying very hard to leave the subject alone on camera. Yeah. And you could tell he was not happy. Yeah. <laughs> and Carson Quapple. You could see it. You could see it in Connor's eyes care. when he got out of the car. You could he was see it in his eyes. He was not a happy camper. And Carson Quapple didn't care. He was pissed and he was going to tell the whole world he was pissed. Yeah. And that's like, and I say piss. Carson Quapple doesn't get mad. No, it's a even kill as they come. It takes a lot to get him, at least like publicly, to everybody in the world. You know, he may be mad in private. You'll never know about it. So, um, yeah, they had a conversation post-race. I happened to catch the end of it. I couldn't hear him, but I caught a video version. And then I got an interview with both of them. And I asked them both. What was that conversation like? And I got two very different answers, which you will now hear. Carson Quapple walked over and you two, Carson Quapple walked over and you two had a conversation. Uh, what was that conversation like? Uh, just chatting about the race, just hanging out and chatting about the finish. What was the conversation like when you walked over there after the race? Uh, I mean, it was more so just, I was just wondering what really, why was he doing that? I mean, I feel like it's, he's not in the position to do that. He's, he's the points leader right now. And, uh, he was having a good points day over the O3 car. And, uh, there was really no need to, for him to chance getting DNF there at the end of the race. So I, mean, I just asked him basically why he's got to be like that. And I told him if he probably didn't drive me like that, he probably would have won the race. So, um, just, eh, just let him off some steam, I guess. But, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll the Bass Pro Shop Chevrolet, we're going to, uh, work hard, getting this thing cleaned back up and get it ready for the next one. So as you just heard, like I said, two really different answers. Connor Hall kind of diverted the question, didn't really want to talk about it. And Carson Quabble was like, yeah, I told him if he had raced me differently, he probably would have won the race. Whoa. That's, uh, that's about the most, um, trying to think of it. Brutal. Like, brutal comment I've yeah. ever heard from Carson Blunt. Quabble. Blunt, Blunt might be a better word. Yeah. Blunt's a really good answer or really good way to describe that. You don't get that Carson Quapple there. No, you though. don't. Yeah. And I, I wanted to say this earlier, but I also wanted to save it for this. When, when Landon Huffman's tweet is specific to these two, yeah. that Carson Quapple doesn't lose his cool about how he was raced with 30 to go if it isn't Connor Hall. Yeah. Brent Cruz used him up like that. Carson Quapple lets that go. But little car store history here. These two have a history with each other, and it goes back quite a ways. Uh, they've been going at each other for a long time. Yeah. Culminated in 2022, um, they wrecked each other more than a time or two. At least when I say wreck each other, there was no blatant right hooks. We're not out here Chase Elliott and people uh, on the front straightaway of Charlotte like he did to Denny Hamlin, but, you know, l late model wrecking people. Yeah. He, he wrecked some, He wrecked Connor at Tri County in 2022, and they asked Connor if it was over, and he said it's just getting started. Oh. And ever since, and ever since then, they have been at each other, and it kind of died down for a while. It's back, yeah, uh, and it's back in a big way, and I think it's going to affect the outcome of this season because Connor, I I know the points are still close, and Carson and Butterbean are. Butterbean's 23 back, Carson's 24. They're absolutely still in this title fight. But there's a difference between Brent, Connor, and Butterbean and Carson because the other three have their head in this title fight. Yep. 
They are tooth and nail going for it. Um, Connor should know he's the favorite. Yeah. Parson Ted's not in this title fight. He doesn't care. In my opinion, he's moved on. He at least knows he's got Xfinity races to end this year. He probably knows he's probably got more next year, if not a full-time ride. We'll see. I think it's at least going to be a part-time ride more than he's done this year, which means he'd be part-time next year. This is it. This is yep. this is all we're getting from Carson Quapo at a late model stock car. He's done everything he needs to do. He does not care. Connor Hall, not that he didn't pick the fight two years ago, but right now he's picking a fight with the last person he should be picking a fight with because he's picking a fight with a guy that has an A plus race car and an F give a fuck. Excuse my language, but Carson doesn't care. I mean, he's the win he's, and, he's and let's, let's, bucks. let's clarify when you say doesn't care because he definitely he, he um. He definitely cares as far as like he, he, like you said, doesn't give a blank. Um, but uh, he definitely, it definitely showed that you know we had we had questioned each other in private that you know maybe he was a little checked out with the Xfinity races he's he's got, and I think this showed that you know what. He still cares because I think if he, I think if he was checked out, he doesn't get as frustrated as he did with Connor Hall, even given the given the past history there. But uh, to to kind of get back to Connor, well, I think, and really all four of them, when you talk when you bring Butterbean into the mix and and Brent Cruz as well, you have Carson Quapple who has nothing to lose. You have Connor Hall who. Honestly, right now has a target on his back. Him and Butterbean already don't like each other. That's very, very apparent. You know, you you just pissed off Carson. You reignited that that uh, that rivalry, and you have Brent Cruz who is has more confidence than ever. He's the hunting badger in all this. He doesn't care what they do. He he's just gonna do his thing. And, and he's here for a while. He's exactly he's got- yeah, and. So I think if you're Connor Hall, you might have just, if you could have just, if he, Carson said it, if you would have raced me differently, you would have won this race. And it may be at the, we be, we may be leaving North Wilkesboro saying if Connor Hall had raced differently, he may have won this championship. Maybe a little lost in all this is the fact that William Byron made his Cars Tour debut, and uh, he got he definitely got the full Cars Tour experience. So let's hear what Daytona 500 champion William Byron had to say about his first run in the Cars Tour. It got to root and gouge in there at the end, and just wasn't used to where to position my car, you know, to to perfect that. So it just got used up a little bit and um, hit the left rear a couple times, and just felt like if I could have stuck to the bottom and, and had some better exits and had position, you know, we could have won just by being on the bottom. So, um, yeah, just should have, could have, would have, but it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. You know, it was a lot of adaptation for, you know, two days just to figure it out and, and know what I needed in the car. We were a little bit off in qualifying, but overall I was able to, you know, get it back in the race. So it was, it was fun. So you guys heard it there. William Byron comes home second in his Cars Tour debut. Outdid Hendrick Motorsports teammate Kyle Larson from last year. Um, Kyle, had, Kyle did point out that he said it wasn't hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle was very clear about the fact that the bar was not set very high. Yeah. Seventh is respectable, but William Byron runs late model races all the time. He's been doing it his whole life. Just never yeah. made it around to the car store until now. Glad yeah. to have him. But my biggest takeaway from that interview is he said... When they got to moving each other at the end, he didn't know where to position his car. Yeah, welcome to the show, dude. <laughs> and like that, like not that that's not expected from a guy that isn't in the series every week, even if he is the Daytona 500 champion. I said it. Yep. It. I think it speaks volumes, and this is why this stands out to me so much. Is it speaks volumes to how good this series is. Yep. If you don't know about the Cars Tour, well, guess what, NASCAR fans? 
your Daytona 500 champion with three Cup Series wins this year just said he didn't know how to do what they were doing. Yeah. These guys are good. And yeah, they do it every week. But you know what? He's one of the best in the world. He should be able to do it on the fly, and he couldn't. And that just shows how good these guys are, and it shows why they're starting to get the recognition they are and why you have guys like Butterbean and Carson and Caden. They're starting to get the opportunities they are. And I'm glad Williams said it because it's guys like him. It's guys like Kevin. It's guys like Dale. It's guys like Kyle last year that when their voices are so much larger. And guys like us. And guys like us. (laughs) No, seriously, those Cub guys and the series owners, their voices are so much larger than we could ever imagine these late model stock regulars being so even if they say the same thing the other three did, it's going to get so much more outreach yeah. and you get so much more engagement from it. So for a guy like William to say, yeah, these guys are good at what they do. um, That only does good things for the series because then people are like, oh, this car's tour thing. He just said they're really good and they outraced him. Yeah, I should tune into That's, this. Um... The series grow that helps the drivers grow. That's uh, that's you know, and it, it reminds me of when Shane Van Gisbergen came into the Cup Series and won at Chicago last year. Why it was such an anomaly and why it was the the story of 2023. It's because it is extremely hard to jump in a car in a Cup Series car and go and do what he did, even just run well, much less win the race. And those are words that were echoed by William Byron after this car store race. And not saying the car store is the cup series, but it, it shows that, you know, the the level of competition is right there with it. Yeah, 100 um, percent. I look forward to who we can draw in next, because I, I think as this goes along, um, you're going to see more and more cup guys want to come try this out. 100 you know, percent. We had a lot tried at Wilkesboro last year. I think Brad Suarez, Ross, to name yeah. a few, yeah. but they never really. That was kind of almost an anomaly in a yeah. way. Never really got to express their voice about it yeah. in the way William did. So uh I also quick note before we move on, that race car was beautiful. Um jun- junior motorsports, like they forgot all the rap last year when Kyle ran. So they made up for it and made one of the best late model, best looking late model stock cars I have ever seen. Uh that car looks sick. So that's all I got on that. I'm, I hope William comes and runs again soon. He did say he did say he'd like to do two or three. He of did. These. Yep. I don't know how it would work out with their schedule, but I'd I'd love for him to be a yearly guy that we get every year. Yeah, for <laughs> sure, for sure. Um, yeah. Let's give a give a big thanks to FrontStretch.com, and then after that, we'll close out the show with Chuck's question of the week. FrontStretch.com is where you'll find all your racing content in one place for free. They have it all from NASCAR to F1 to IndyCar, grassroots racing, and even iRacing. FrontStretch has you covered with daily news for every series, weekly columns, and even on-site coverage at every NASCAR and Cars Tour event. Head over to FrontStretch.com, subscribe to their YouTube page, and give them a follow on X to get your daily fix on all things motorsports. As always, big shout out to FrontStretch.com and thank you to them for allowing us to use the interviews that we do on this show, allowing me to go to the racetrack and get said interviews. So if you'd like to see more of these videos or the full versions, go to FrontStretch Grassroots on YouTube or go to FrontStretch.com. If you want a regular NASCAR content, go to regular FrontStretch on YouTube. Uh, Check the site tomorrow because there is going to be a Top 10 Cars Tour Finishes of All Time article that goes up tomorrow that I just finished writing. Uh, about an hour ago as we record this super fun to write ties right into this episode so watch this then go read the article because i said so um yeah and uh and by the way guys uh guys watching at home and front stretch chuck does a really good job don't tell him i said that though um but anyway anyway uh real quick shout out to jared fryer first car store race of the year the 2020 champ showed back up at caraway and ran fourth uh they late model memes made a really funny meme about him finishing fourth while the other four beat the crap out of each other. Yeah. That, yeah. that made me, he's just sitting there like, Hey guys, uh, I'm here. He never touched him either. He just nope. sat there and watched it all. So shout yeah. out to Jared. I hope to see him more this year. 
Um, See, yeah, I, no. I do want, I would give a call to him too, as, as well. Um, you, we, you, you met him for the first time this weekend and you know, he, he's just a good old boy, man. He was, he was as, as cool as they come. And I just wanted to shout him out for that. Cause he, he was, he seemed like a very genuine human being. So that was, I was good to see him out there. Yeah. Gave very much down to earth vibes. And that's what we like to see in the short track world. Um, yeah, I guess we're going to do this whole thing called Chuck's question of the week now. All right. I'm ready. I don't know if I've you, been, I don't know if I've you been waiting a long time for this. You remember how this <laughs> segment works? So I okay. do. So this one, this week's question kind of speaks for itself. So I'm going to twist it a little bit since Buddy won't know the full history of best car store finishes until tomorrow when he reads my article. That's right. Um, I can read. The three that are fresh in our memory. This past Wednesday night, Langley a couple weeks ago, and Dominion last year, put them in order. Um, that's tough because you have um, Langley this year. That's uh, there's a difference because I think photo finishes and just the the type of battles we saw at um, at Caraway and Dominion. I think they're 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 very different as far as how they're judged as as finish. I mean, obviously the question is very simple. What you know, number one, two, three, but I think they're special in their own way, if you know what I mean. Um, so that makes it really tough. But uh, that's that's why we have a segment because it's not Chuck's easy question of the week. Um, this is going to be recency biased, and it's also going to be. Uh, just also just bias in general because I was there. Um, we're gonna go Dominion or Dominion, Langley, and my opinion, Caraway. Um so that's three to one. That's three to one. Yeah. Um, I like I said before that we started the show, been a lot of races in my day. I'm an old man <laughs> to seeing as lot to uh seeing as many races as I have. Or I guess that would make me a young I'm a young man for as many races I've seen. But <laughs> Um, so don't let him you. Yeah, I uh, like I said, I hold this one in high regard. So I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with that just because I got to experience it and feel the palpable energy that was those grandstands at Caraway last Wednesday night. So I'm not gonna give you guys my top three. If you guys want my top three, go read the article. It'll be on my Twitter. It'll be on Front Stretch's Twitter. I'll give you a hint, though. So, uh, there is one that is not during the below sports era <clears throat> that knocked one of those out of the top three yeah. and i'm not hey. telling you which one so <clears throat> on that note where do we go next buddy we go to hickory we go to hickory and um it's one of my favorite throwbacks for or favorite throwbacks favorite <laughs> weekends for nascar in the year the throwback weekend and uh i look forward to attending my first cars tour throwback because as you guys may not know I have a plethora of throwback vintage racing garb that I look to that I look forward to digging out of my closet and putting on full display out there in the hot sun at Hickory Speedway. So um, I'm looking forward to it. It'll 100 percent be like 95 degrees. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be hot. those I'm old those, those old Dude. all over print black t-shirts those are those are going to stay in the closet let me tell you <laughs> it better not rain and run on sunday afternoon like it did last year because oh we were baking like yeah. i was trying to watch richmond on my phone while i was there at the same time and my phone shut off because it was too hot um <laughs> so if you guys don't know car store does a full throwback weekend just like nascar except they allow them to change the numbers. Yep. So be fully prepared to be 100% lost and confused during uh, Hickory's both pro and late, pro late model and late model stock car race because half the guys won't be running their regular numbers and yeah. it'll be really confusing and you'll be like, where did these paint schemes come from? But it's super sick. Uh, big payday for those guys too. I know for a fact Josh Berry is running. I don't know of any other big names at least they're public yeah. so we'll have to see hopefully we get a couple other guys since it's part of uh olympic break yep yep for sure uh before we right. go before we go chuck give me a throwback that you would want to see okay so at dominion me and car store pit reporter james pike we like 
tried to bribe Minnie Tyrell into running the Jeff Gordon Flames car. So hopefully, because like that was his idol growing up, and yeah. he ran he ran the Rainbow Warrior car a couple of years ago. So that would be cool. Um, if Butterbean ran an old Lee Pulliam throwback, that'd be sick. Um, I don't know what Josh is going to do. Josh may run one of his old late models, honestly. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what. I, I want I, Brett Cruz running like a, a Kevin Harvick late model from back in the day. Yeah, if you could have just let me talk, I could have. <laughs> <Okay. Sorry. laughs> that is exactly what Sorry. I was going to say. I said, I said, uh, I was going to say either the team needs to do it or someone needs to kiss up to the to the owner and run a Kevin Harvick throwback. Um, so, yeah, it would be fun to see all the throwback. My bad, guys. There, I yeah. ruined Buddy's thing. Yeah, you did. Uh, it's okay, Chuck. Um, <laughs> anyway, we will see you in a couple of weeks after Hickory. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the Big Motor Small Blade YouTube channel and check out all of our motorsports content. And always support your local short tracks. Again, that's going to wrap it up here tonight at the Caraway Speedway. Thank you, Jack Litch, right down there. Of course, Blaney, Jason Kitzmiller, Minnie Tyrell, Brendan Queen. Boy, how is it going to shuffle for a